Hello, boys and girls. My name is Otzi and welcome back to another day in Minecraft. Do you remember this cavern? It's been a while. If you do, uh, you have a good memory. The corner all the way back there, that's below the uh, hole underneath uh, the uh, castle tower, whatever you want to call it. And over here, um, I have a contraption uh, farming a little bit of uh, bamboo uh, for the uh, small furnace array here. But as I uh, noticed, um, for once, it's too slow, especially if you um, are in a hurry to uh, smelt uh, lots of things. And then not all of these actually uh, are filled with bamboo. So that's why we will use a little bit of the space we have here to build up something better. Uh, a multi-story uh, furnace with the furnace uh, at the lowest layer, then on top we have a collection system for dried kelp, which also needs a furnace array to dry. And then on top of that, we will have the kelp farm itself. And that should use uh, the uh, vertical space quite nicely. Um, but I don't think we will need all the space we have here. So um, I will start from the bottom up and uh, then we will see. The lowest layer is complete with 12 furnaces on this side, which is actually the back side, and uh, 12 more on this side and apparently a zombie on top. Um, as you can see, here on top we have a, a water stream going around here, uh, which is aligned uh, uh, with uh, some sea pickles. So the items uh, go here on the inside over the uh, hoppers. And this is the feeder line for the things to be melted. And same thing here around. And in this corner, I would guess, uh, goes the input. Then here in the middle, we have a hopper, uh, not a hopper, a chest minecart. Uh, you can uh, see it better from uh, this side with loading station. Uh, it's the same design as over there. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, chest minecart is filled until it is full or until the uh, hopper is empty and then sent on its way uh, through this slope and then coming back, uh, basically distributing the fuel for the furnaces. And this chest on top will be hooked up to the next layer on top, uh, which we will build next. And then here on the side, we have the output, which goes into uh, this dropper here. Uh, and the merge here is on a hopper. Um, while a dropper can spit out items at double hopper speed. So basically we could feed in two hopper lines um, and everything could be spat out. But then again, we would have the problem as all these items will go up and into uh, the uh, sorter up there. And there we also have hoppers and they can only uh, process one item. So in order to avoid issues with uh, the uh, smelted items ending up in the uh, overflow box in the middle, um, we will merge here on this hopper and have basic 
do not use full capacity on here and then this uh, setup uh, that's something I would not say I invented but I uh, figured it out on my own uh, afterwards I did a bit of research and uh, it's really not that new it could also be done with one observer less the way this works is uh, this uh, where did it go yeah this uh, comparator takes the output from here powers this piston as long as something is in there pushing the uh, observer down creating a fast redstone clock uh, powering and unpowering this redstone then this is detected by uh, uh, this observer here powering the dropper spitting everything up and as you can see it's really fast just thinking instead of redstone can i also use a node block here does this work yes works the same and then we have a, a compact design and what's important for me is that it is one wide tileable and we will use that same design on the next level um, which I have to work on now. The next layer is now also complete and by the looks of it there is not enough room on top for the kelp form. So it will go here in the back. Uh, here you can see all around we have uh, droppers which are powered the same way as the one down below there and now you also understand why the design have to be a uh, one wide tileable and with the water around here everything will flow to this spot uh, where i can pick up because uh, this furnace array on top here will be responsible uh, smelting the kelp it will go down into the uh, the uh, chests and droppers and uh, then be spit out um, in the uh, water stream uh, once i enable it currently it is disabled by a row of uh, extended pistons down there uh, which basically prevent this piston or this observer to be pushed down which would uh, trigger uh, this dispenser so only if i release this um, the uh, items can be uh, dispensed uh, flow here where I can uh, craft them into uh, kelp blocks. Probably should replace this with, uh, with a workbench and then uh, chuck it on here into a hopper line that goes over here and up. And then up here we have another minecart loader for the uh, kelp blocks which will actually feed this upper furnace array first and everything excess will drop down into uh, the lower furnace array so uh, we will probably need a bit of uh, uh, bootstrapping this probably with uh, uh, bamboo uh, so that the first batch can be uh, dried and uh, then we should be good to go uh, powering this contraption with kelp blocks uh, so as I said 
uh, here at the back we will have the uh, kelp form and the kelp will go up and uh, then be dropped into uh, this water stream not sure uh, where exactly yet um, it's probably somewhere along these uh, small lines um, or even here yeah here is probably good so um, everything is properly aligned and can be sucked up by the hoppers but that's a bit more work for me to do and um, I will see you again with the uh, completed kelp form. It's time for a progress update. As you can see, I have created a kelp box into which the kelp form will go. Then over here is the collection system with the uh, dropper uh, splitting everything out into a water stream bubble column that will go up and then deliver um, to the uh, upper furnace array and uh, this dropper is fed by this side uh, a line which will contain eventually water from over there and then in here uh, we have a merge from over there and the middle line and in here um, the harvesting is done with uh, flying machines. Uh, so the kelp will grow up and every once in a while the flying machines will cut them down one level above ground so they can regrow. And then on top we will have um, flowing water to the left side and the right and the uh, kelp that will slowly make its way upwards will then fall into these gaps either in the middle uh, on the side over there or here but as you can see i have not yet finished uh, this side because i wanted to show you a neat trick i figured out to uh, to build this as you can see, you can walk on the uh, uh, closed uh, fence gates and you can crouch and pillar up your way all the way to the top. Then crouch, move all the way to the back and then aim at the bottom of the hitbox and hold right mouse button and then you go down opening all the fence gates. And that's probably the uh, uh, fastest way of uh, putting the fence gates in place and uh, opening them. You have to be a bit careful when running over them uh, to not stop at the wrong time because you can fall in the gap in between. And as you can see, it's quite easy once you get the hang of it so i will finish this side then we will also need a bit more work uh, at top side um, then a uh, bit more redstone for launch mechanism of the uh, flying machines because currently they are um, uh, launched manually but all in good time the water tank over there is finished and uh, uh, thanks to the fully grown kelp uh, which needed a bit of uh, helping uh, there are now all water sources in there and as you can see uh, we have uh, trapdoors here at the uh, top and this is so that the kelp does not grow all the way to the top but we still can have one layer of water sources above the kelp 
so any items will flow up and eventually end up on top of these trapdoors once they are uh, opened. Uh, the usual way is uh, to use uh, signs, they're a bit cheaper, uh, but they are also a bit more complicated to place as you cannot walk on them. So let's get to the final stage here on this side where you can see the middle strip is uh, on the uh, bottom uh, side of the block above and everything else is on the lower one. So we actually can uh, shift and waterlock these and then We should be able to do this. Yep. And just like that, we get the collection system in place. And as you can see, water flows from the middle to both sides. Eventually, um, we will have a bit of loss here on the middle strip because any items that will float up here will be stuck and go to neither side. So the final thing we need to do here is open all the trapdoors so that the uh, items can actually float up. And then doing the same thing on the other side, which takes a bit of time, especially uh, planting and watching the kelp grow um, and as the kelp does not always grow to the to the full height um, sometimes it needs a bit of uh, helping there but that's not really an uh, issue is it and let's wait with the uh, middle strip for the end and well, let me let me finish this do the other side and then we will have a look at the redstone down below which is needed to trigger the uh, flying machines so everything is uh, harvested in a timely manner And yep, see you soon. The redstone down here is easy to understand, but it was a bit of a tight squeeze as um, I uh, thought this uh, space would be enough and uh, did not pay any uh, thought to uh, how I uh, want to do it. So it almost worked. I had hoppers here before, but they of course get locked by uh, redstone blocks there, which is not good. So as you can see, we have three ESO hopper clocks and the one in the middle, that's the main clock, um, which contains five stack of items and this means um, it ticks at a frequency of four minute 15 seconds and uh, then each time uh, the uh, redstone block or the uh, as long as there are items in here we get a signal out of this comparator 
and uh, on the other side uh, we have one on the uh, other hopper and this in turn uh, controls the second set which has three and two so five items in it and basically how this works for each uh, tick uh, one item over here will be moved uh, which means we have five times four minutes 15 uh, which is around about 20 minutes and then we get an output signal here and the way that we have comparator on this hopper and on this side it's on the other one means that the signal is alternating so basically it goes uh, through here as a constant signal and then it is converted into a pulse here um, triggering the flying machine and the way this is set up uh, after about 10 minutes this one will fly and 10 minutes later the other one and then 10 minutes later this one and you can see the lever there uh, under the uh, obsidian that's the uh, master switch uh, so we can switch off the whole thing um, even if the uh, clock is running and that's important because uh, um, if we are leaving the area um, flying machines um, tend to break um, so yeah i think we can uh, give this uh, seeing a, a run here uh, which means we have to activate the uh, flying machines or unlocking the uh, mechanism and uh, then see what happens and there she goes and it's quite laggy but here at the top you can see all the kelp is flowing nicely to the side and the machine returned already Kelp is flowing up and we have a bit of loss in the middle as predicted. Now that we have harvested and already have full dropper of uh, kelp, let's see how this uh, proceeds by placing the comparator here and then the kelp is spit out flowing over there and fed into the uh, the feeding line at the top there and now here you can see how the kelp is flowing in and uh, moving off into uh, the uh, furnace array and if we have a look down here we can see the first furnaces are already lit uh, probably due to the, the chest placement uh, over there these two are not um, which is not really a problem and uh, we already are collecting dried kelp down here uh, which we can uh, release uh, when we get a considerable amount with this lever and craft some uh, kelp blocks and then drop them here in this uh, hopper line. I have put a double chest of stone uh, in the input and as you can see they are coming in and filling up the uh, hoppers leading to the uh, furnaces uh, over there 
eventually uh, it will go all the way around. As you can see, almost all the furnaces up to here are lit up, save those in the corner, which is probably due to the uh, water stream. So let's see how this goes. And we have to wait a bit until we have collected a few stacks, but it should be pretty fast. And I will hold on to the stacks uh, instead of putting them into the line, which would fill up uh, the uh, chest up there to power the furnaces on the top. Because only once that chest is full, the overflow would actually uh, go down and what we actually want to see is uh, uh, how the action goes down there and there the minecart goes already on its way back so we should see the uh, furnaces down here uh, starting to lit up yes uh, at least the ones that uh, have something in there to be uh, fueled and uh, smelted and here we can see how the finished items are uh, shopped out and up and into the uh, sorter so life is good again this has been a longer episode hope you enjoyed it anyway and i will see you soon with the next one until then goodbye